Hello, everybody. Welcome to my presentation. Thank you for coming. I'm Dan White. I'm the CEO at Filament Games. Filament Games is a game development studio. We've been around for 18 years. We've developed over 400 projects, and we exclusively develop games for positive impact. A lot of the times that means games for learning, but uh, the game portfolio that we've developed across those almost two decades is very eclectic. We work with a very equally eclectic mix of clientele ranging from textbook publishers, mission-driven not-for-profits like iCivics, uh, VC-funded startups, toy companies, healthcare, researchers, you name it. Um, the bottom line is we have a methodology whereby we take learning objectives and translate them into authentic and compelling game mechanics. And that's what we get up and do every day. I want to talk to you today about a game called Robocop Sports League. But before I can tell you about that, I have to tell you about its father, I guess, a game called Roboco as a backstory for how we got to where we are in the space of digital robotics. And per apropos to the sort of point of, of this presentation, uh, what we're doing on the Roblox platform, which is a platform that um, if you're here, you're probably at least passingly familiar with. I'll talk about it very briefly. Um, it's essentially the it's an instantiation of, of the metaverse. Um, I won't get too far into that right now, but suffice to say at the moment, it's a hyper popular platform with billions and billions of users and millions of daily active users. I want to say it's something around 50 to 60 million daily active users. So a very, very uh, large population of people hitting Roblox experiences every day of all different ages. Um, historically, the platform skewed a little bit younger and now you're seeing uh, the platform age up a bit as well. So there could be an entire 20 minute presentation of Roblox. I'm going to talk very briefly about it. Okay, this is Roboco. Yeah, so basically this began with the National Science Foundation grant to try to make robotics and edu engineering education more accessible to the masses. And the essential concept was robotics is a STEM superfood. It's a great way to teach programming, but also problem solving, systems thinking, and uh, the engineering design process. But robotics kits are extremely expensive. There are all sorts of logistical challenges working with robotics kits besides the expense. And, uh, and basically by digitizing robotics and robotics kits uh, that we could make them available to, to more people. Um, so this is Roboco. It's been in development for oh, almost half a decade, maybe a little bit more, and it's out now on Steam uh, in early access. And then we'll be coming to uh, Meta Quest in May of 2024. Okay, so fast forward a number of years and we get connected with Roblox. So as I mentioned, Metaverse platform, millions of daily active users, billions of users overall. And we start thinking about, we start percolating on this idea of how do we leverage this technology in the service of education, which we do with any new interactive platform ranging from mixed reality to mobile, et cetera, uh, across our two decade history as an organization. We are, in, in general, we consider ourselves platform indifferent. It's really about how do we apply our core learning design methodology and game-based learning methodology on all these new platforms to reach more people and deliver different types of educational experiences. So Roblox presents a really interesting opportunity because it is inherently and intrinsically multiplayer. And we don't often have the opportunity to create multiplayer experiences. Most of the games in that 400 plus portfolio are games that we have developed for a single player use case, which um, in my mind, cuts out a lot of what's great about good learning context is that you're working and collaborating with other human beings in order to accomplish something meaningful and significant that you couldn't necessarily accomplish on your own. So the Roblox platform was very compelling to us for this reason. And at the same time, we were fortunate enough to be one of the early grantees for something called the Roblox Community Fund, which is a fund that Roblox itself has put in place in order to fund high quality interactive educational experiences on the platform that ultimately will lead toward a version of the platform that is exclusively designed for institutional educational environments. So there will be certain things that are the same as the public consumer facing version of the platform, but other things that are modified in order to make the platform work better in an institutional education setting. So as one of these grantees, we were able to take the, uh, the Roboco IP and start developing a version of that IP for the Roblox platform. 
I'm going to go ahead and play a video so you can see what that looks like. As you can see, this is an instantiation of, of the Roboco IP on the Roblox platform. Same concept where you're building robots. You have this kit of parts that allows you to design any kind of robot that you can possibly imagine. The difference being that now you're taking these robots into these multiplayer sporting arenas. And we use the term sport very loosely here. There is a, an arena that is uh, conventionally like soccer, but all the other arenas are very, very um, diverse and weird. So there is an arena where, because we're a Wisconsin-based game development company, you're sorting cheese in a cheese sorting factory, working with other players. There's an arena where you are, um, herding sheep there's an arena where you are collecting orbs some of these challenges are competitive some of these challenges are collaborative and uh the other thing that's really important to note here is that we're partnered with an organization called first robotics on this and the cool thing about this is that it has allowed us to capture the first robotics methodology in a way that was not really possible in the single player instantiation of roboco where you were just uh building a robot in a single player experience in order to solve a challenge or solve a puzzle. So the way first, for, for those who are not familiar with FIRST Robotics, the three decade old organization that has um, a tried and true record of uh, getting young people interested in STEM discipline, STEM college and career. And the way that they do this is through basically positioning robotics as sport, just like any other middle school or high school sport students form into teams and they compete against other teams in the local area and then if they do well they take their robots to increasingly high stakes competitions at the state level and then eventually at the national and global level um, it's a really cool program like i said long history long track record of success in uh building stem affinity among youth so the great thing about bringing this robotic, this digital robotics experience into the digital space is that we were able to replicate the multiplayer sort of cooperation aspect of the first ethos, which is competing or collaborate, competing and essentially collaborating at the same time around these multiplayer challenges, uh, sort of replicating what they do in the real world to the extent possible in the digital space. Again, all with the goal of how do we get these types of robotics experiences into the hands of more young people so that we can broaden participation. The basic loop, the basic core gameplay loop of Roboco in Roboco Sports League, um, but particularly in Roboco Sports League, um, is the engineering design process. So we're first asking players to build a robot that they think will perform well in one of these multiplayer arenas so let's say that they're building a soccer robot maybe they want to build a goalie robot or maybe they want to build an offensive robot they have some sort of hypothesis about what the best solution to that play space is and that or, or that design challenge is and they instantiate that design through our building tools in the digital space they have a garage space where they're literally building this robot once they've done that they go and they compete in these multiplayer matches and then guess what? Things probably don't go the way they expect them to. And that's particularly just certainly true in single player Roboco. It's definitely um, true even to a greater extent, perhaps in Roboco Sports League, because those spaces are dynamic, which is to say that there are other people bringing their own designs that you cannot anticipate into those matches. And of course, uh, that informs your own robot design. So based on how that match goes, you then go back to your garage and you iterate on your design. You make some tweaks, you make some changes, again, based on a hypothesis about what is going to be the most efficacious design, and then repeat that process. Um, along the way, you are, you know, you're um, learning fundamental robotics concepts about things like torque, center of mass. You, ha you have the ability to, uh, you know, adjust properties like RPM on your robot. Um, and, uh, and essentially customize a variety of different factors for so that as you get more advanced as a player, you have a higher chance of not only winning, but also getting better at the engineering design process, which is our core learning objective. Uh, so just kind of very briefly here, there's a lot of reasons that digital robotics is worth considering if you are trying to teach robotics. And I will, I will never be 
uh, someone to stand up here and say that digital su should supplant physical. That's definitely not our message. We think that physical robotics uh, are and should be here to stay because there are a lot of uh, really important things that you learn from working with physical kits that are just impossible to replicate in the digital space. One of those things is definitely physics. Our, the, the fidelity of the physics that we build into the virtual spaces will never be uh, perfect. It will never be a perfect reflection of the real world. And that can be a learning opportunity, but it's also an important caveat about anything that we do digital. So we're big fans of the idea that digital robotics is a supplement or a worst case an alternative if you can't afford physical robotics. Um, but we like to think of it as, as a supplement or an augment. But definitely rapid prototyping is the one that I want to highlight on this list of, of potential advantages of digital robotics for consideration, because that is definitely one, besides cost and, and ease of access and use, that is definitely one of the things that I think makes digital robotics so, robotics so special. And that's for a couple of reasons. One is that uh, with physical robotics, there's a very steep learning curve. Um, and part of the challenge when there's a steep learning curve and your goal is to get more players, or more, I should say uh, a broader diversity of people interested in robotics and STEM, uh, is to make sure that we're not losing them when they face plant trying to climb a, a very steep learning curve. So with digital, not only can we shallow out that learning curve a little bit, but we can give you some early wins so in physical robotics, it might be weeks of learning and tinkering before you have something that can do anything meaningful or interesting. Whereas we can give, in the digital space, we can give the player some very quick wins. The the other thing, we can get them standing up a robot in very short order that can actually, um, you know, where they can get into a match or they can start solving a puzzle in a matter of hours as opposed to a matter of weeks or months. The other big thing with that rapid prototyping is that um we we by abstracting a lot of the robotic systems we're able to make it so that we can cut to the chase on the conceptual understandings uh versus in in physical space where you are necessarily limited in how quickly you can get to those conceptual understandings because screwing things in and um yeah, uh, building physical robots just necessarily takes a lot more time. So you can build by by sort of abstracting things. Um, the player is able to, the learner is able to move faster down that learning progression and start grappling with higher level robotics concepts that they then they might be able to if they were spending more of their time on the physical logistics of robotics. Um, a number of other, I think, things that are um, pretty exciting about. Um, digital that that uh, sort of affordances of digital that um, are unique, um, but I, I don't want to sort of belabor the point. All that is to say, there are things that we can do with digital robotics that are very hard to do with physical, and that's very exciting to me. So that that's a high level overview of Roboco Sports League, what we're doing on the Roblox platform, um, why we think the Roblox platform is an interesting space to be experimenting with educational video games. Uh, and uh, for anybody who has questions or wants to learn more about Roblox Sports League or the Roblox Community Fund uh, or Roblox as a space for developing educational games in general, happy to be a resource. Don't hesitate to reach out to me at whiteatfilmgames.com. And I hope you enjoyed this brief overview of digital robotics and Roblox Sports League. Thank you.